Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm and welcome back to Big Week on the Farm. In this week's video we're going to focus on our sprouts. Uh, we're going to catch up with John Smith there as he is flat out there getting irrigating. Sprouts are always planted at this stage but he's irrigating. And we're also going to catch up with the lads as we finish out the Padeja season. Just uh, planting is nearly over now so we're going to catch up with the lads there as well. So we'll head over to John Smith first. In one of our sprout fields there this morning, normally Cahill would be here but I think where he is, he's not too worried about what's going on in one of the sprout fields. So we're here in a variety for Christmas or for October. So half of this farm will be used up um, between October and Christmas week. So we have four varieties here. This is to stretch out our, our sprouts throughout the season. So what we're looking at, these plants would have been planted in the first week of May. Um, you can see they're starting to come up, come up nicely there. And if we went down into the ground, we'll see the module, the roots are starting to split out of the module and starting to go hunt for their, for their water and for their nutrients. So these plants would have got um, some compound fertilizer. There's uh, the first uh, bit of nitrogen is to come on now in the first, in the next two weeks. Um, we'll grub them so they have the first herbicide. It's just to keep the weeds down as the, as the plants are coming up. At the end of the week now, we'll be coming in with our grubber, which is to, it's to just break up the soil again and throw up around the plant. So the idea is, as the plant gets up, we want a good uh, soil structure around it to be able to hold the plant when it's standing at Christmas. So if we have lodging plants, it's obviously harder for the harvester to, to get through them and harvest them. So the idea of the grubber is to, one, is to, is to clean the soil and remove any weeds and then two is to throw that soil back up around the plant and it just gives it that bit of stability around Christmas um, to hold the plants up as the weather kind of gets windier, wetter um, and more moisture, potentially frost in the plant. It just prevents them from leaning over and it makes it easier for the harvester driver to come along and pick them up. So they'll get two, they have the herbicide done, they'll get two grubs and before their first grubbing they'll have um, a slow releasing nitrogen applied onto them so we'll go on with a bag, of ha bag and a half of Perlka um, which is a slow releasing um, nitrogen which will just give the plants a bit of a kick as they start to get up. So when the plants come um, they come in little propagated modules so the, the plant itself is roughly around two to three inches tall and it's just a little compost module like this. Um, the reason why we need to irrigate is obviously because as you go down the soil even though we've had a couple of dry, dry weeks, there's still plenty of moisture in there in the soil um, for the plants to survive on and, and, and start. Um, but as they come in the module, you only have an inch of, of the root structure there. So when we were working this soil, we were drying out the top two to three inches of it. And obviously, if we left that with no water, the plants wouldn't have anything to survive on. So that's why we gave them a quick um, dosing of water here. We gave them two runs of the irrigator um, over the last two weeks, and then we'll give them no more water unless we have um, a, another bit of a drought, droughty weather. So you can see the roots there are starting to come out. They're after breaking their module. So now they're starting to drive down towards the moisture. And the idea is the deeper your roots go, the stronger your plant will be. So one, we have the soil being held up for them, and then two, a good root structure will keep the plant standing at Christmas. So that's the idea of it. So we, don't, we want to give them water to start them off, but we don't want to give them too much water that they're going to become lazy and they won't develop their, wheat, their roots down into the, into the soil bed. Because if you have your, your roots only on the top of the soil bed, one, they're not getting the nutri nutrients that are in the soil, and then two, you have potential of them lodging uh, come, come harvest period. So when we come into the field this time of year, what are we looking for? Now obviously it is weeds. Um, we have our first harvest on, so we have a few weeds coming up there. There's a bit of grass seed, there's a bit of uh, fat hen. There's some rape, which is probably not what you want to see in a sprout field because it's obviously a brassica with a brassica. So um, that might be a difficult one to treat. But obviously with our grubbing, that might just solve that problem until the, the sprouts get a chance to get up and form their canopy to swallow them out. Um, 
Two then, obviously, as well, will be our aphids. So we'll have to keep a close eye now on our aphids um, coming into this time of year, and that will run right up until Christmas. So you'll be looking on the inside of the plant, under the leaf, but more times than often, it's going to be in the heart of the plant. So you'll have your inside two or three leaves there. Will wear whenever we're in the field, along with Johnny Hogan. Um, that's what we'll be looking for. And then, obviously, our nutrient plan will come along as they start to develop their leaf and their canopy. That's where we start to introduce our, our, our feeds, our fertilizers. So we'll, we'll go with that off the basis of how the canopy is performing, how the leaf is performing. Over to our second sprout field now, where John B has the irrigator really setting it up at the minute. And um, we'll just have a quick run through of what we're doing and why we're doing it over there with the irrigator. Second farm with sprouts here. Uh, these sprouts, a the majority, are going to be for uh, the Christmas week and after Christmas. So we'll run our sprouts right up until hopefully around Paddy's Day and this farm will, will fill them orders. So we're with John. John's the main irrigator man. Mm. And rumour has it, John, you're taking over the camera duties for Colin when he's well, gone. Well, someone has to do it, Charles. What, what, well, what do we do? Rumour has it, you wasn't doing a good enough job no, for actually being yeah, sent away yeah. so you could take That's, over for. Now you have it. Now you have it. So, yeah. John's never been bad at Christmas, uh, the Christmas crib here, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll keep him busy. So, John, irrigating, just talk yeah. us through the setup of it and kind of what we're doing. Well, kind of rate we're going out. We're we'll putting out 10, 10 mil of rain. As is same as rain, like that's yeah. corn to ten bill. Our pump is below at the river, which we have set up down there. We put our lay flat pipe up to the reel here. You have your reel now is in operation. You can see your gun there. So the gun is just working on a bit of a paddle. So is the pressure coming up? There's a paddle on the gun. Yes. Just to flick it. And there's a, a little bolt that splits the water and makes it spray more so on one side. So it sprays side. just like a rainfall. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. see the gun there and you think it's coming out as a big jet of water. But, it's but there's not. a little paddle just just breaking that. Yeah. And it's just enough to Pull, make yeah. a drop like rain. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a very good system. So then we're on the bit of a hill here. So it's kind of it's kind of a bit uh, dodgy here. A bit, bit dodgy. So you kind of came up with a bit of a plan there. Reverse up and reverse up and reverse up. So reverse up. So we have the tractor supporting the weight of the reel yeah. there. And as John kind of walks across the field, he either might go up to the top or yeah, he might be able to do something similar as you go down similar, there. Yeah, it's not as bad over there, I don't think so. He'll yeah. be in the valley, so he should be all right. So uh, in the other farm, we've done two pulls on the field. We've two pulls done. But um, over here, we're only going to do one pull, isn't it? We slow down the reel a little bit yeah. for one pull. For now, anyway. Yeah. And then if it gets another bit of a droughty weather, then we might be back yeah. out again. But the idea is probably to get the sprouts finished and maybe get set up with the spuds, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're trying to go on trying to do spuds this year. Yeah, so we we're have our spuds over on the water, over at the first sprout field as well on the end too. So we hope to be able to get a bit of our spud fields done as well over there, just to try and push them on that so little yeah, bit area. It's not too hard to set up. Let's talk us through what's on the screen here. Well, yeah, we have our. It's computerized. The whole system. It's telling us it's out 149, 48 meters at the minute. Just reeling in. It's at 60 meters an hour. 8.6 bar pressure and she should be in at around 12 o'clock. So at 12 o'clock then we'll be back here we, to we, hopefully do the next run again. Yeah, go, move it over. And, and move it now. over again. Yeah. So by the, probably what day is today? Wednesday? By tomorrow evening we should have this farm finished. This one here, yeah. We yeah. Should have, yeah. And then the lads will be back over now later on today. Just, you can see there's probably a little bit of crow damage there. The crows well, are coming yeah. along. Yeah, and just pick. picking them up and dropping them. So we just they're need to back over. Picking, they're just pulling them out Just pulling them out and dropping yeah, them. Yeah. So we need to come back over here and walk them again and just fill in the blanks that the crows have yeah, picked up and yeah. any misses that maybe the planter had as well. So um, that's the kind of little bit of activity in the sprout field for now. For now, yeah. So we'll be walking this field. We'll, this will get a herbicide now at the, probably at the weekend. And then same as over the sprout field, in the other sprout field, we'll be starting to hill up this maybe at the end of next week. So for yeah. now, it'll keep us busy. Oh yeah. There's a little bit of uh, beetroot to plant next, so yes. you'll see that in the Saturday video. So second time lucky on that one, yeah, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. So uh, um, the first time was all right. Just, yeah. yeah. So we, it's from one bit of madness into the next. So spuds is finished, spouts are finished, into beetroot, and then we'll be getting the combines out. Then it won't be far away. Yeah. That'd be so nice. um, that's it for today. You'll see the spouts again in a couple of weeks. We'll keep an eye on them. We'll do a bit of a crop walk on them again with Johnny again soon enough. So. So we're finally down to our last field of planting pedejas and we really hadn't planned on planting this field but it was a field that we had it in grass. Grass wasn't particularly good in it there on the first cut so we decided to plough it and uh, put a few, we had a few bit of seed left over 
from the potato seed and we said we're gonna pour it in so boys are walking away we've Carl over there he's on the destoners and I'm here on the planter just to get to the headlands and then we just do the headlands and that will be it then for this show so big shout out to all the lads for a good old season it was a very slow start of the season because obviously it had rained a lot but when we got into it there we weren't long covering the ground we had we had Riddle of Sea, we had Jack and Alan on the ploughs, Alan on the spread the fertilizer, I had Carl on the ridging, and we had Carl and John B, of course, on the destoner, along with Kayla. I was the planter man, and we had James on the rippers, and who else? Kevin came in and the evenings gave us a bit of a help out as well. So, a big, uh, it was a big team of lads, and in fairness, the lads they were great, because this time of year, you know, long hours and we're gonna have to walk around the weather and we certainly did do that so well probably so they'll all be happy enough now just to you know put the feet up for a while anyway. Now we're still going to be very busy on the farm, we've still loads of other jobs to do but this is probably one of the biggest jobs between this and the harvest. Um it's some of the biggest jobs we're gonna do all year. And now that we're finally you can see the finish line, it is great. I still have my old planter over there and we're gonna run over to it shortly. We have a little job to do with it. Um, very handy for doing headlands. Because the big planter is fine and, and it's great to get through walk, but it's not that easily transported on the road at times. You kind of need a bit of an escort to ring around. And some fields we were finding that we were kind of getting with the headlands, then we couldn't do headlands. So we left the little planter, it's a two-year-old planter, very, very simple. Uh, works very much on the same principle as this planter here. And we had it there, so I had a little bit of seed left over in it, so I want to empty it out because you have to manually empty it out. So I'm going to run out in the field, and we'll see that uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, hopefully, it will work. It did work early on, anyway. But I'm just going to do a few runs with it. And it's your first year in the stoner this year. We've only done the year now in the stoner. What do you think about it so far? The stoner was not too bad. The start there, I thought was bad. It wasn't too bad, but it had to get used to. A couple of days on it, it was, it was no bother. Um, it's just getting used to all the controls and everything. I'm trying to keep, it, keep an eye on the job we're doing and see if we're doing that right. But um, no, I've got any real problems with the solar this year at all. Uh, no, well, not really, actually. We've been on a few bent bars there with rope bit of this. Uh, and just general men put some of them in grease and they keep them keep them in them and they shouldn't give you any bother. So and on your last field now. Last field now, yeah. Oh it was grand there. It was tough at the start there, the ground conditions were not great but I mean now it's the start of June now it's, it's really really ideal. Normally you would see me driving the case and the big four row planter, but today we're going back a bit in time. We were John Deere 6910 and the two row and the tackle planter. Now we just had this for doing a bit of headland, we had a bit of seed left over, brought it up the feed here and going to empty it. But just to show you the basics of the planter, now while it's quite old, um, it still works very well. Again, it's a belt feeding these belt systems here. So as you can see, the potatoes are lined perfectly there in the line. Uh, the sponge roller is just there to kind of tighten them all up and then they drop down. I can set these basins from inside in the cab and the depth control is governed here by these wheels so you set your depth and then the wheels right up and down the bed just to keep the, the optimum planting depth because as you can see here now when we take away the drill what we're looking for here it makes slightly a different drill compared to the 4 uh, uh, slightly higher um, but still still perfect if we can dig down here now so what i'm looking for here really is the position of the planter or the position of the pideha and this one's just sitting right there so we're always looking for a nice bit of clay a lovely clay on top of the the tuber and then a nice bit of clay underneath it so that gives me optimum digging then when i go to dig it back that we've lovely clay so we're also looking for spacings so on these here we have another another one there and we should have another one here somewhere which we do so these are a very good plant though they're very accurate uh, as you can see in the line should have another one here ah, there it is there so that's the space there generally roughly around 
And you could just put my foot in between them there. And lovely clay, and that's what the destroner does. It just takes out all those heavy lumps and stone, and it leaves that lovely, lovely clay for the potato to grow because they need to be in the center. They need to, the bottom of the drill is always wider so that when, when the tubers initiate that we have loads of tubers, loads of potatoes and they have space to grow then as well because it will take quite a drill that one tuber there could produce up to maybe 20, even maybe more uh, potatoes along with it. So that's what we're looking for there. The drill is, as we say, a little bit higher compared to the one over here, which is the 401. It's more blocky drill, probably wider at the bottom with a flatter top. They say it's probably better for when, when it does rain that it kind of holds more moisture in it, but the old style one still works very well. So I have a little bit of seed left into it here. As you can see, the last of it. And I'm just going to empty out the planter because on the other planter I can um, we can run them out by just pressing the button but on this one it's just not that simple you have to turn the wheel so just don't want to do that a little bit lazy today all right jake new cameraman by the way jake here flying ahead uh, going all right oh, yeah. yeah so we'll hop in let's go through a few simple settings again i have my cameras on it because the cameras are very important we can see the line of, of potatoes running down the uh, the belts here and just, just to make sure them belts are going and then with this camera which we can turn around I think AV yeah so look it just changed from one to the other I prefer to have it on uh, a double screen if it comes back to it can have these two screens here so it shows me a left and right side of the planter and you can see them all lined up again the screen is very simple works very well we can go into it here and change if you want to change any any of your spaces or anything like that that's what that's for. You can turn on and off the drills. So it still has what the, the modern planter has, except it's just that bit older. So we're going to hit the gears and we should watch them coming down here. And on we go. So again, it's adjusting itself. You can see the tubers running down. It does beep quite a bit at times until. And once they're following each other and keeping tight to the drill, or tight to each other, I know that they're dropping down equal. I'm starting to run out a bit here on this one, so I just might have to stop and transfer a few potatoes across the other side. So the planter is completely empty at this stage, nothing around, still works very well, the old girl. Yeah, it's great to have something like it as a backup. We'll pull it back into storage now, back in the shed, clean it up, oil it down, pull it back into, into store. Four row in the meantime, a little bit more, just a headland to do here. That's really it then. So we'll be finished planting 2023. Next roll on the harvest. So that's it for this week's big week on the farm. Yeah, we've been very busy and finally, finally, we've got the planting season over and done with. So from everywhere here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Saturday.